Hello out there, and today we're taking a look at my first ever real steel knife. And this real steel is model H6S1, and I went with this model because it is the, uh, you know, a model that none of the people who were recommending real steel to me had. So I wanted to get one that, you know, despite all the recommendations, and there were quite a few of them, um, nobody that I know has this knife. So again, wanted a fresh perspective on the, the knife itself and the brand, so I went with this one. Really happy that I did. And this is going to be a uh, a little bit longer of a review for me than than most of the videos that I put out there because there are a lot of talking points here. You know, this is a a budget knife with some higher end materials than what you'd expect out of budget knives, and so it, there's a lot of um, a lot of really good qualities, and then some other fit and finish things that definitely need to be touched upon so you can get the uh, the whole idea of what the knife's about. But if you only have the next 30 seconds to to watch, let me tell you really quickly that I think this is a good knife, and personally, I really like the design. I like the knife a lot, and at the forty dollar price point, which is uh, which is what I paid for it, it's a pretty darn good deal too. You know, and this would be a, a very good EDC for someone and a nice classy like gentleman's carry for someone who wanted a, a, a full size, full size EDC for that function. So yeah, if you don't have time to watch the rest of the video, uh, I get it. But hopefully that little bit of information and that recommendation can get you started and, and maybe you'll look further into it in the future. But uh, for now, I'm going to jump right into uh, the rest of the video. And I want to start by giving the perfect example of my total experience with the knife. You know, some of the ups and some of the downs and some of the really good touches and some of the quality issues. And all of that can be just summarized when you take a look at my, uh, my experience in the unboxing process. All right, so this is the box that the knife came in. Really cool. I don't know if all real steel knives come in this kind of packaging, but, uh, but this one is pretty neat. And so you open the box and you get your little foam piece out of the way and what you're left with is the knife wrapped in this very cool polishing cloth how neat is that you know good touch of class embossed with a real steel um you know logo and name so you know this is something i would expect from a knife that i paid three or four times the amount for if that you know probably even more than that and we're getting this for you know a really a really nice cheap price point so really excited right off the bat like like stoked about this knife all right real steel let's go and then i open the knife and the first thing seriously the first thing that i see no joke and i'm the lights hitting it right now is this spot right here in the scales and it looks like a nick but what it really is is a uh it's a, a manufacturing blemish in the carbon fiber laminate all right, so this is a G10 scale with carbon fiber laminate on top, and either this is a, a void or just some kind of blemish that wasn't, you know, that wasn't caught because, uh, you know, it, there's no feeling. It's completely smooth on top, so it's not like in the texture on top. So just a fit and finish uh, mistake that, you know, obviously you don't want to see in a knife, and you don't want it to be the first thing you see when you unbox a knife either. You know, and one of the things that makes you concerned is when you're talking about like quality of production, the question is, did they know that this was there and still sell it or did they not catch it? You know, either way it's, you know, it doesn't, doesn't say too much about the, um, about the quality of the, uh, the production and manufacturing, you know, there should be some quality control there that was definitely missed. But again, it's one of those things with budget knives, and even though there's so many aspects of this one that that tell you it's not a budget knife, you know, I had to keep reminding myself it is, it is, you know, it's just nicer materials and generally nicer quality. Speaking of quality, I just want to take a second and appreciate the lines of this knife. This is one of the most attractive knives that I own, just in terms of lines, and Everybody's going to have different opinions about this. Uh, everybody has different types of knives that call to them. It's the same way with cars where sometimes you'll watch a car commercial and be like, God, that is a gorgeous one. And I don't know why I like it so much. It's just certain lines appeal to people differently. And this one is just gorgeous to me. I just love the way that it rises up into the palm swell right here. And then, you know, transitions perfectly into the jimping and then nice wedge to the drop point and the recurve. 
It's just really, really nice looking knife. So I don't know who Liang Gang is, and hopefully I pronounced that somewhat right, but I um, really, really like this design. Okay, so now that we're a few minutes in, let's get into the specs and uh, the other details of the knife. So what we have is a blade of 14C28N Sandvik steel which is something I'm pretty happy about because I consider it a very, very good mid-grade user steel. Um, I've had a ton of Kershaws with this steel and a, a few other brands, of course, use the steel and it's a good one. It's a really good one. It'll function well. It cuts really well, which is obviously very important. Maintains its edge uh, decent, but the big thing is that it touches up easily, really easily. And with a recurve like this that is going to be somewhat difficult to sharpen, uh, that's a very important aspect. All right, so a nice recurve. Not a fan of recurves so much anymore because they're tougher to sharpen, but with a, with a steel like this, it shouldn't be that big of an issue. We also have a hollow grind. So when we're thinking about uh, functionality, uh, the fact that this steel is going to be really good for pull cuts is one thing. But... It will also, you know, it'll also slice really well with that grind. All right. Um, I guess now is as good a time as any. Let's get the weight out of the way so I can move the scale off the table. So, yeah, we have the Sandvik steel, about three and a quarter inches there. And here is the weight at 3.96 ounces. So... Not particularly light, not particularly heavy. A little bit heavy if you were looking for like a lightweight gentleman's carry, but overall, you know, very functional weight as well. All right, other things about the blade that I like a lot are the thumb studs. The thumb studs are a really nice design. Big, beefy, really easy to get a hold of, really easy to actuate as we'll see in a couple minutes. And then the jimping is functional as well. Um, not perfectly grippy. It is a little bit sharp, but there is a good amount of traction and a good amount of just overall jimping. There's a good amount of it. So um, yeah, good touch there for ergonomics. And that's important because as we get into ergonomics right now, the ergonomics, um, although it is an extremely comfortable design, it's a very slick knife. The, uh, the carbon fiber laminate is particularly slick because it doesn't have like any texturing on it. And then the, the frame lock itself is very slick also. So the good news is that we're able to overcome that with just very simple and smart ergos. You know, the hand fits onto uh, the handle very nicely. Like I said, the jimping is good. If you do have to choke up a little bit further, the ramp down is perfectly comfortable as well. Choke up a little bit further. You can put your middle finger here behind the guard and then use the thumb stud actually really comfortably for some more uh, fine detail work. And I am squeezing this knife extremely hard right now and not feeling any hot spots in this configuration. So pretty good, you know, pretty good overall. You know, would I like a knife that is a little bit less slick? Certainly I would, but you know, that's, uh, that's not what was in the cards here. And honestly, it's something that is not a huge deal. One other thing with ergonomics in this case is, uh, Looking at the amount of space at the back of the handle, we've got about another half inch before we get to the butt of the knife. So if you're thinking about um, the fact that you might have larger hands, you still should be able to get a pretty good, uh, pretty good purchase on this one if your hands are larger than mine. Okay, so ergonomically pretty happy with that. Now let's flip to the other side and take a look at the... Uh, the lock side because there are a couple things here that are definitely worth talking about and the main one is right here. So this is one of those fit and finish things and one of those big curiosities that I wanted to touch on because um, it's unique and I haven't seen anything like this before so definitely wanted to bring it to your attention. And what this is right here is an over travel stop and a secondary safety. So when the knife is closed this tab doesn't move but once we open the knife and lock it into position, you know, then our lock bar comes and engages and we have the freedom to engage this tab. And this tab, as you can see, overlaps where the lock bar is and so that keeps the lock bar from disengaging. So it, it acts as a safety and it also is an over travel stop. 
Now that said, this is a manual thing, so you don't have to use it. So if it's not engaged, I mean, you can totally warp your, your lock bar and you know, you, the over travel stop doesn't, doesn't work. But um, yeah, it's your choice. And for me, I sort of like having the choice because honestly, I've never really seen the need for something like that. And I don't really care for secondary locking mechanisms because it makes me doubt the integrity of the primary locking mechanism. You know, anytime I see that on CRKT, like the auto locks and the locks, I'm like, ah, oh, this, this locking mechanism must suck because <laughs> they had to put a second one in there. But that's not the case here. And we'll talk about that when we get to the functionality of the knife in just a minute. Um, really creative with that, though, the fact that it can be uh, on or off and, and the way they did it. Uh, the, the bad news, though, is that it was just executed poorly. All right. Poor execution here with, uh, with the way that it was put together. And I really just didn't care for it. Um, it was really loose out of the box. So if I were to like shake the knife when I got it, it would rattle, which really irritated me. And then if you look in these grooves here, uh, you can see how dirty it is. And I, that's after I cleaned it. It just came from the factory dirty in there. And it made no sense to me. I was like, all right, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I took the knife apart. I uh, did my best to tighten this piece up as much as I could so that it didn't rattle anymore. And while I was taking it apart, the whole knife was filthy. I mean, this is a brand new knife, and this didn't come from like uh, eBay or anything. This is a brand new knife from Blade HQ, and it was just filthy on the inside. It was like it had been dropped in the dirt or in the mud while they were like putting it together and wiped off. And to the knife's credit, I mean, it uh, it still functioned really well before I found that, but I hadn't even really carried the knife before that happened, so it really wasn't something that I had done. And just one of those weird things. And, and again, when we're talking about value and, and budget, certainly not something you would expect from a, a high-end knife to, to see a dirty knife when you take it apart the, the first or second day that you have it. So uh, definitely something to be aware of when we're talking about uh, quality control there. Moving back to the clip, uh, the clip is a, it's a good clip. Not, pr not crazy deep carry, but it's deep enough. Really good lanyard tube here. Uh, the one thing I'll say about the clip that is sort of detrimental is the fact that how slick this lock bar and lock side is and the material of the clip itself, it makes the clip, you know, and the, the knife a little bit slick and it moves around in the pocket. Is it insecure? No, I mean, it's not going to come up and out, but just side to side moving around in the pocket. Yeah, that will probably happen just a little bit. So definitely want to be aware of that. Um, it was more of a problem for me in... Uh, in like certain types of pants versus other types of pants. So, you know, it, it might not be for everybody that you have that issue. All right, so now talking about functionality because that's the most important part. So sorry to, to wait 13 minutes in to, uh, to talk about that, but if the knife is nicely put together and cuts and opens and locks, then we're gonna be in good shape, right? And the good news with this one is that the action is really good. Like I said, the thumb studs are really nice, easy to actuate, uh, extremely smooth knife. And I'm not saying smooth like it's gonna free drop because it won't do that at all, but very little friction opening and closing. It's just very smooth. Running on bronze phosphor washers here. Uh, doubt you'll be able to see them in here because the knife is so flush. Uh, it's really put together tight. But yeah, good bronze phosphor washers there. And uh, lockup is extremely good, very tight, pretty early, and then centering is nice as well. All right. So this has been a fun one to carry, guys. Uh, a fun one to carry, a good-looking knife, a lot of really good stuff to say overall. Um, to summarize briefly, I think we've got a pretty darn good knife on our hands, and I'm excited about other stuff from Real Steel. You know, you just have to have an understanding of what your expectation should be when you purchase a knife from them. You know, this is, at the end of the day, still a budget knife, but it's a budget knife with some better materials than what you might be used to from budget knives, you know? So they're not going to be perfect. You know, the knife was a little bit dirty. Uh, there are, you know, some mishaps with the fit and finish and the quality control. That kind of stuff, yeah, unfor unfor excuse me, unfortunately, like, that can happen. But when you think about other knives from other companies, the bigger brands at this price point, um, this is right on par with some of those knives, if not better. You know, I wouldn't expect to see 
Kershaw put out a $45 knife with a big defect in the, the scale like this. And I wouldn't expect Kershaw to put out a $45 knife that has dirt in the, uh, in the pivot when you buy it or that has a loose piece here. I wouldn't expect that from them. But I also wouldn't expect Sandvik for $45. And I wouldn't expect carbon fiber for $45. So there's a bit of a trade-off there. And that's the interesting thing. It's like, what do you really want? And what can you deal with? You know, you're going to take a chance with the fit and finish, but you know what the basic materials are. And I mean, I feel pretty confident in the usage of this knife. I mean, it's very well put together at its core. You know, it's just some of the other aesthetics that are a bit of a problem. So depending on how you look at it, this might be a really, really good deal or just something to, to avoid completely. All right. Overall, I'm happy with it. I do not think this will be my last real steel knife. Uh, I'm glad to have had the experience and I am actually probably going to do some modifications on this stuff because uh, this is just seems like a really fun one to work on. So we're going to mess around with this and uh, yeah, just overall, um, yeah, looking forward to uh, to what the next one's going to be and to what the future of this knife in particular is. So thanks for watching guys. Any feedback you have, if you have experiences with real steel, I really want to hear about it. But any other questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, you know where to find me. Always let me know, but I will talk with you soon. I appreciate your time and your patience over the course of this long video. Uh, take care and thanks again.